at Labor Arena. 15,000 await the entrance of our quarterfinalist, Justine Anna Arden, who has won four majors in her brilliant and yet young career. And Lindsay Davenport, the oldest woman left in the championship, nearing 30 years of age and six long years since she held the Grand Slam championship trophy, and that was right here in Melbourne, the year 2000. And as you could see, that billboard, Lindsay Davenport, Justine and Arden, that would be worthy of a Grand Slam final, but we're going to see these two talented ladies in the quarters. And then playing in the quarters and said it's really something, but there are other players and some matches still to be played, but already today, the two Russians clashed in what we got to say was a pretty ugly intramural quarterfinal. Charitable Maria, event. A ch <laughs> It wasn't pretty, but Maria Sharapova, for the third time, has beaten Nadia Petrova in the quarterfinals of the last three majors in which they both entered. It was not a great-looking match, but Maria wait, awaits the winner of this one. And, of course, tomorrow, Martina Hingis, a surprise in the tournament. She's, she goes up against Kim Kleinschers and Patty Schneider and Amelie Moresmo. So Hingis is... Uh, really the wild card in there. She was given a wild card and boy has she come good with it, hasn't she? She has indeed. Now let's get right to the most important issue involving tonight's match. Lindsay Davenport, in perhaps the best condition of her life, yes. has worked so hard. She gets here, plays well, and then two matches ago turns an angle. It's such a pity what's happened to Davenport because we were all uh, so happy to see this woman. It's in such fine in good nick, as they say down under. Lindsay had worked very, very hard in the offseason. She's really looking to win at least one more major. Nick, and she's won this one before. She was looking very good for the first couple of rounds. It looked like nothing but blue skies for the world's number one. Then those blue skies went away. I've never gone over on my ankle before, so I wasn't really sure at the time exactly what had, what had happened. And it's no question it was the court. With this surface, the hotter it gets, the stickier it gets, and um, just caught it on that one volley. And I remember thinking like, oh God, it's getting worse. And I was like, you know, train really hard, try to get everything that I normally injure better, and then I trip <laughs> and something happens like that on the court. So there was a moment of like two minutes where I'm like, I can't believe this now happens of all things. I think it's just one of those things where you shake your head about in disbelief. And of course, that's part of being a tennis professional. There's bad luck, injury, bad luck involved as well. We'll see how well she can move. She did not hit yesterday, did hit today, and reportedly felt pretty good about uh, how that ankle felt. Now, Justine Anna Arden uh, quietly has motored through this championship, <laughs> and she may be the most healthy of them all. Isn't that something? Because Justine Anna Arden has lost so much to illness and injuries in her career, Nick. But she looks great, doesn't she, this year? She. She dropped the uh, the physical fitness, her physio, who's been working with her for a number of years, and she's having all kinds of problems. She's leaner now. I don't think uh, she's carrying about 10 pounds less, and she's always going to look to be aggressive. As she says she needs to play with aggressivity, <laughs> and she does that not just with her tremendous all-court game, but with her footwork. I mean, this is... This is something that should really play out in a big way in her favor against Davenport, whose mobility is never great at the best of times, but if it's at all compromised, then Justine and Arden will be able to really go after that. And when Lindsay, she spent, she spent yesterday with her ice, with in an ice bucket, you know, with her ankle in this ice bucket, and the swelling has gone down, but it's still going to be very difficult for her. And yes, she warmed up lightly today, but and we'll look to see. She says her biggest problem right now is going to the backhand side and then pushing off that left ankle to recover back into the court. Somebody like Justine Anna Arden is not going to allow Lindsay to get away with slow movement, Dick. They've met nine other times. Lindsay Davenport won the first five. Justine Anna Arden has captured the last four. One woman will advance to the final four this evening. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 2006 Australian Open, brought to you by Franklin Templeton Investments. Gain from our perspective. 
Casual time of the evening, and those without tickets to Rod Laver Arena will watch on the large screen out in Garden Square here in Melbourne Park. The retractable roof open. The coolest evening of the championship, 64 degrees. Winds were very treacherous this afternoon, and in part accounts for the play of Petrova and Sharapova, who were mounting errors uh, as if they were about to go out of style. Low humidity. Perfect night to play and great for the audience as well. There's your head-to-head. -head, uh, 2005, the last meeting in Charleston uh, on clay. And uh, Arden winning as uh, Davenport retired in the third set. They played here two years ago, and Davenport jumped out to a four-love lead, but uh, could not hold on to the double break, and Anna Arden won in straight sets. That was a crazy match. Lindsay up two breaks. She had points for 5-1. She had three set points at 5-3. She was just trying to hit outright winners, and a lot of them were landing, especially off of Anna Arden's second serve. And then Anna pulled close, which is what she can do so well, and Lindsay just lost belief. Well, they know each other well. No need for a scouting party. Here are their thoughts. We had a great match a number of years ago, and I remember being up a lot in the first set and losing. I have to be careful on the first two or three shots in the points, because every, everybody knows she's very aggressive on the first uh, shots. So. No matter what her ranking is, she's always a very feared opponent, and I'm you know, going to have to play very well and hopefully be 100%. Yeah, it's going to be a, a good test for me, um, playing the number one play in the world in the quarters of the Grand Slam. So the game is on, and Lindsay Davenport, the number one ranked player in the world, she has been for the last 14 weeks, total of 98 weeks now that Lindsay has held that top position. Only five women in history have been number one for 100 weeks plus. She said that would be a elite group. Great record last year, 60 and 10. And she maintained that number one status. Her Australian Open record, no one's won more matches, 55 in the Open era. Well, she was number one in the world in 2005 for all but seven weeks. And she won six WTA titles in all, second only to Kim Kleischer's, who had nine. This woman, Justine Enna Arden, missed a lot of last year. Ready for the pretty much after the clay court season. She just played very little. And that's why she's ranked eight in the world right now. And Arden opens the match. There's Davenport attacking. She's going to have to be aggressive early in the points. And there's her trip to this quarterfinal round. And she had some tough rounds there. Uh, Sprem is a very tricky player, and she had a tough set against her. Then Maria Kirilenko, the young Russian, took her to three, and Kuznetsova just totally let, let her off the hook in that match. That's where she had re-injured her ankle, lost four straight games, and Kuznetsova couldn't keep her out there long enough to take the set and the match from Davenport. Davenport defeating two seeded players. This is the first seed Anna Arden has played. capitalizing on the net court mother Anne Davenport who <laughs> apparently yesterday uh, Lindsay didn't like the idea of sticking her foot in that ice bucket and said mom you do it first if it's not too painful then I'll try it <laughs> it's like a food tester <laughs> a food tester I remember a couple of years ago Davenport was really considering retiring because she was so fed up with all her Ill, her injuries had a bad knee problem had a 
a problem with her foot as well. Michelle Gabriel is uh, Davenport's trainer. Married an Aussie, this woman, and you know, instead of quitting, Davenport decided to really dedicate herself. Got her own physical fitness trainer and has worked so very hard. This is just rotten luck for her to have an ankle problem. Yeah, that was one of those not tired yawns, but nervous yawn. Is that I hope she's going to make it. <laughs> So much dedication to yeah. this championship. Oh. And a break point early for Davenport. And there's her husband, John Leach. That this is guy John is from a great uh, tennis family. Exactly. And he watched it last year when Lindsay was up a set and three love in the final here, only to lose to Serena Williams. Well, Davenport a chance to pounce on this break point. Second serve. And her only chance, I feel, Davenport it, against Anna Arden is to deliver body blows. She's been serving very, very well in this tournament, and her return game, of course, is almost unsurpassed. Yes. Well, she went for it. And Arden tuned up for the Australian Open Championship by winning the pre-Aussie at Sydney. <laughs> it's a tricky win for her, too. The final against Francesca Schiavone, the tough Italian. And beat Martina Hingis in the first round. So yeah. that was an interesting in bookend. In the final, down a set in 4-1. Figured out a way to win it. That one skid it off the service line. Well, Davenport moved well there. Deuce. Davenport must play this match inside the sidelines and trying as much as possible to dictate from the center of the court. That's how she was able to play that last point. And remember, Davenport at the net is tough. She's comfortable up there. Boy, that's just what she wants. Just what she wants. Again, dictating the tempo from the center of the court. And another look for a break. What ball striking, huh? This mm -hmm. early in a match? You hear the sounds they're making off their strings? It's a portent of perhaps a very happy match. Oh! Another second ball on break point. Davenport. Good news is she's not limping, and better news, she's broken early. Luke Jensen is down on the court with us. Yeah, Dick, the biggest thing I'm looking for, body language. And when I saw her step on the court, she had a smile on her face. She came up to the net to, for the coin toss. She was smiling. Coach David DeLucia has her fired up. As far as the ankle, she's gone to the backhand a couple of different times, up to volley and out to the ground stroke. No problem so far. She actually looks happy out there. She's ready to fire. All right, that's good news for Davenport fans. There's David DeLucia, the new coach of Davenport. Of course, Lindsay is the last American left, men and women, here at the Australian. And a foot fault, and that's the first foot fault call I've heard in a week and a half. Of course, she may be favoring that ankle. Gets the service winner.
not as heavily wrapped as we saw against Kuznetsova when I used about a half mile of tape to put her together. It's one of those high ankle sprains that you hear often in the NFL, much tougher than the low ankle. 15 on. The swelling above her ankle ha has gone down considerably, so that's good news. Actually, with the wind, it is a little chilly this evening. In our den, as she missed on that backhand, in the four matches coming into this quarterfinal, actually has more winners from the forehand side than the backhand. Oh, a bad miss. Wide open court. I like all the early action up at the net, though, from Davenport. I don't think we'd be seeing so much of that if her ankle were in better shape. She's got such good hands. She's, she's, so, she's so solid up at the net, Davenport. This could be a good thing for her. Full team, Full team. And uh, Arden going for shots, but uh, overpowering them in this game. Long again. And a point for Davenport to love. sent this one up and there that's plenty of time for Anna Ordan to scramble into position, hit a swing volley winner of her own. Good taste of her mobility. Opportunity to break back for Anna Arden. Game and I'm happy. And so it is. Back-to-back uh, -back breaks to open this quarterfinal match. She's only 23. Seems as if she's been playing on the tour for 10 years, doesn't it? She's the same height as Martina Hingis, but look how much bigger her serve is than the Swiss's. A lot more racket speed, a lot more action. Stop missing all these first serves. It's early, but she's at 36 percent. And Ardan against one of the world's best returners of serve. Since she did not play last year and is the champion of 04, working on 11 straight wins here in the Australian Open. Oh, 
heavy hitting from Davenport's end. And as you can see, she has not yet faced a seed and has not been troubled by anybody. Donates a double fold and Davenport with three breakers. Had a virus that knocked her out for so much of 04. Only big title that Justine was able to win that year was the Olympic gold in Athens and didn't start back in 05 until March. And then Justine played a, a very heavy clay court circuit, winning in Charleston, winning in Warsaw, winning in Berlin, and of course, winning the French Open as well. But um, she'd hurt her hamstring in the last few rounds of Roland Garros, lost the first round of Wimbledon to Eleni Danili Du, and lost in the fourth round of the U.S. Open. Oh. That's why her ranking isn't too high right now. And then she played only two more tournaments, lost early, and told her coach, this year's over. I'm going, looking towards 06, which didn't please Carlos Rodriguez that much. But that's how she, that's how she handles things, Justine. Some two, real trouble on serve. Two double faults. The break for Davenport. She leads two games to one. More experience and weaponry of Lindsay Davenport. Longevity of their relationship is something. <laughs> Working together since she was 14. 13. Back in 96, Justine's father, Jose, asked Carlos if his small child could work with him. And almost immediate, immediately, she won the 14 and under orange ball. About half a year after that, she won the junior Roland Garros at the age of 15. Oh. A dream she had made to her mom. And the French always means more to Justine than any of the majors, but this major plays closest to red clay than the others. Ah. Hold on. She should like these conditions. High rubbery bounce, great traction. But right now, she's just making a few too many errors, and that's all to the good for Lindsay Davenport. Oh. a bad time for Davenport to come forward, 40 love, but too big a hole. That flamboyant <laughs> backhand. <laughs> it is, isn't it? <laughs> Pretty flamboyant forehand, too. Doesn't get as much attention because so many of the women hit two-handed backhands, not the one-handed, where you really get to have a big release, big finish, like this woman's, like Moresmo's. Oh, she was able to clip it inside the sideline, and it wasn't easy for her to reposition and hit that smash. Leads 3-1. Most players wouldn't make that important play a second shot at the net. Such a deep, well-struck approach. This is as good a start as the injured Lindsay Davenport could have hoped for. Oh. 
Oh, she's good. striking the ball as well as any match of this championship. Love 15. A lot of players will tell you, Dick, that when they're injured, their focus gets even sharper. They just have, they know they're, they're, that they've got no energy to waste, no concentration lapses, you know? Two good sets and out. That's what Davenport's looking for. Let that service. And this, the serving is really, look at that serve, service percentage on her second serve against the big Davenport return game. And that stays in. But she 15. had to hit a very tough shot to deliver the winner. <laughs> she had to back off that shot a little bit because it was struck so well, so big. It helped her get that angle. That's tremendous return. How'd you like it, Luke? Well, obviously, a tremendous shot from Davenport. And one of the things Delucia's brought to the Davenport game plan are tactics. Davenport sometimes would panic when she didn't uh, do well with her power and she couldn't go to a B or C game plan. Davenport was able to scout the last match they played here. He got it on CD wrong. He was able to really pick apart the Justine game plan and really go after this match with a lot of power. That was that match two years ago when Davenport had the terrific start but couldn't hold it. Again, Davenport controlling the middle of the court. Out slugging her opponent for two more break points. NR Den broken her first two games and now in trouble again. Oh my, playing on an injured ankle. She has a double break lead, as the Aussies would say, good on ya. <laughs> Lindsay Davenport taking all three of NR Den's service games to lead by a double break 4-1 in this opening set. Meanwhile, on Margaret Court Arena outside in the wind. Second round, mixed doubles, and there's Martina Angus. <laughs> she, she's back, and she's not leaving. And She's over on the far side. That's, uh, of course, uh, Jonas Bjorkman partnering Lisa Raymond. Tremendous, these two teams. I mean, this is only a second-round match, but Mahesh Bupati and Martina Hingis have already taken the first set. They're on serve in the second, so we'll be watching that. Hingis, of course, yeah, played that match against... The, uh, the Aussie youngster, now it's 3-all. The Aussie youngster, Sam Stozer, last night after that match, Stozer Three played a mixed doubles match after her singles last night and won it. Let's go back inside <laughs> labor. So Lisa Raymond with that last point. She's uh, the top-ranked doubles player in the world, the American. Now Lindsay Davenport trying to solidify her two-set lead, 4-1. And the American Lisa Raymond and Sam Stozer playing doubles here. They won the U.S. Open and the year-end championships. Fifteen. Davenport's second double fault. Guillermo Vilas. When it's Grand Slam time, Guillermo's there. Late call, 15, but uh, a correct one. In the chair tonight, Enrique Molina, Spaniard.
Davenport, remember the last time they played here, up two breaks. Three set points and ended up losing in straight sets to Justine. They both remember that. And are again winning 7-5, 6-3 in 2004. And here she is with a couple break points to get one of those uh, breakers back. And another error from Davenport's forehand. It's 4-2. So we've had just one hold of service in the first six games. And that was the pattern this afternoon as Maria Sharapova defeated Nadia Petrova. There were just a rash of errors. There were 20 double faults between the two women. And Sharapova eked out a two-set win. And Sharapova booked to meet the winner of this quarterfinal in the semis. Again, no surprise to her. She told the press that I know that Lindsay Davenport, those first two strikes of the ball are going to be so critical. She's going to come after me. And that has been the case tonight. First ace of the match. Twelfth ace of the championship for N. R. Den. She has been aced only one time. Testimony to her good return game. We got to get hats like that, Mary. You know, it'd be great for our on camera. <laughs> hey, if you do it, you know I'll do it. That's it. <laughs> you don't have to bet. Let's not go there. <laughs> And you just, don't you sense that she has not yet made the adjustment against this woman's power. The weight of shot of Davenport is unlike anything she's faced to get to this round. She's not yet on it, is she? No, she isn't. It's just like coming from 3A ball and all of a sudden you're playing in the majors. Exactly. Another break point for Davenport. Anna Arden, this is remarkable. And the risk of being broken four consecutive games to open this match. And she's serving at 36%. And that, in part, the problem. Because Davenport is really laying the wood on that second serve. Or strings, as the case may be.
Oh game. my oh. goodness. And that has to really frustrate the Belgian champion. Four straight times broken and another double fault gives Davenport a 5-2 lead. They know how to live here down under. Relaxing out in Garden Square. The food courts and all the favorite libations. And inside Roof open Rod Labor Arena. Lindsay Davenport with a 5-2 lead serves for the opening set. Justine and Arden unable to hold serve. I wonder how far back you'd have to go to find her losing the they first four the games on, on her serve. Thank you. That's an impressive statistic. 46-3 and three Davenport at the Australian when she takes the opening set. 0-4 oh, when she loses the first set. And Arden. Love the team. It was at the net where Davenport turned her ankle. And the few bad plays she's made tonight have been up there. She normally would make that last play uh, 49 out of 50. Oh. But continues to frustrate N.R. Den with her depth and weight of shot. Another wild forehand. David DeLucia, Mother Ann. Watch their daughter move to within two points of the opening set. And to set point, the service winner, serving 55% for the championship and 58% in this first set tonight. Game. And the set to Lindsay Davenport, considering the injury. What a lift this gives to the 29-year-old American. Garden City, Melbourne, second largest to Sydney in this country, and located down on the southeastern coast. And Lindsay Davenport, 6 2 in a 34 minute first set with credentials that will earn her a bust in the Hall of Fame. Well, Lindsay Davenport wants one more grand slam, more than that if she can, but she has lived without a major title in six years since winning here in the year 2000. Anna Arden opens the second set with her second ace. Have another look at the opponents. Justine Anna Arden face. I mean, not that they're 
that they're bad, but necessarily bad, but they're nothing of the caliber of play that uh, she's facing tonight. All baseliners that uh, don't have nearly the wattage of Lindsay Davenport. It's really an Those interesting point because, as you saw, Lindsay Davenport's trip to the quarters, she started with some qualifiers and some that ranked maybe around the hundreds. Then she, she plays a seed, then plays another seed that's, that's right. a little tougher and eases her way up the ladder in terms of the strength of opposition. That's just right, Dick. I mean, Maria Kirilenko is a very tough young Russian teenager. And, of course, Svetlana Kuznetsova won the U.S. Open two years ago. Another sure, double fault. One. Yeah, she's just, uh, she's pressing so much. Charlize Theron, the Academy Award winning actress here promoting her movie North Country. Oh. All of a sudden we don't know where Luke Jensen is. <laughs> what? Oh, there he is. All right, just checking. Oh, you can already hear the uh, fans for the next match just getting so riled up outside. Marcos Bagdadis with that big Greek Cypriot <laughs> fan club. Oh, she misses the open court, and NR Den finally has held service. Well, Tuesday night, it's a doubleheader of college basketball on ESPN at 7 Eastern, Kentucky and Auburn in SEC action. And at 9, on to the Big Ten as the Hoosiers take on the Hawkeyes. Super Tuesday, presented by Lexus on ESPN. And here at Rod Laver Arena, in our den, uh, a bit bouncier after holding her serve, although Davenport again had openings to put her in trouble as she did throughout the opening set. Now in our den, reading that first serve. <laughs> this, uh, <laughs> this is outside Labor Arena. These guys here seem to be rooting for the Cypriot, Marcos Bagdadis, but his opponent, Ivan Lubacic, will have some crazy Croats cheering for him as well. Be a great sound. That match will be coming up after this one, and what a very pleasant start. Change of pace for Anna Arden to open up set two with a hold and some very snappy football. second sec football call. Yeah, at 15 all here, second game of the second set. Davenport quickly to a 6-2 win in the opener, oh. and she throws in her third double fold. Really, almost to the baseline with that second serve and two break points to Anna Arden. It doesn't look terribly windy down there, Dick, but that end of the court from where Lindsay is serving is the place where Andy Roddick told us the other day there's more wind than you can imagine. It's hard to control the ball. And we saw both Sharapova and Petrova had great difficulty this afternoon from that end serving and accounted for most of those 20 double faults in their match. And the break for NR Dan to take the early lead in the second set. And now that leads to
Excellent serve, setting up the easy forehand and uh, the pace of play for the 23-year-old Belgian picking up considerably here in the second set. from Justine and Ardain. Both Both solid enough to draw the error from Davenport. And usually from there you're hitting something that doesn't have quite the sting of Anna's shot. She wrapped around it, got a good angle off of it. And now sits on a 40 love lead. Hold to 15. Her season last year limited by the injuries. Her four titles were all on clay. But if you pointed out, Mary Carrillo, the, the surface plays of all the other major tournament surfaces, most like clay. So she usually shows well here. set but NR Den in front three love in the second. So the number eight seed she's ranked sixth in the world Justine Anna Arden rallying here in the second set to a three love advantage but Davenport trails by just a break and leads in the match, winning the opening set 6-2. Quarterfinal action at Rod Laver Arena. Thank you. Maria Sharapova to meet the winner in the semifinals. Twice, Justine Arden has won at Roland Garros. Has not yet won Wimbledon, but uh, again, that 2004 where she was out so much of the year, she was still able to win gold at the, Sid at the Athens Olympics. Good play hitting behind the speedy Anna Arden. Davenport has three of the four major titles on her mantle, unable to win at Roland Garros. You may know the story about Justine. She won the Brussels Ten and under title in 1992 and first prize was two tickets to see the Roland Garros women's final. So she went with her mom and happened to see one of the greatest matches I've ever seen. Celis against Groff, a tremendous three-setter. 
She pointed to the presidential tribune and Stad Roland Garros and told her mother, one day you'll be sitting there in the player's box watching me in the final. Of course, her mom died when she was only 12 years old with colon cancer, so she never got to see Justine win. But when she did, remember how she looked up to the heavens. Mm -hmm. That was <laughs> that was. That, well, a I don't want to get you going. Moment. Yeah, that's I'm easy. <laughs> now she's won that one twice. She's already won this one once. And surely, with the game she owns, she could win at Wimbledon, win all four majors. My guess is that she's got a better shot of winning her fourth, her missing major, Wimbledon. A little bit easier than Lindsay Davenport can win her missing major, the French. Now this is a must hold for Davenport. 40 love to 40, 30, down love three. Where she can't push back into the court and Justine going there twice and then carving under a shot for the drop winner. Deuce. Kind of expected to see more of that from Justine in our den, and we probably will. Again, Dick, I think we we watched Justine spend that first set just getting used to the the power that this match would would hold for her. And now look, she's dialed in, isn't she? Again going to the backhand. And Davenport comes up with a remark. It's a Federer-like shot. <laughs> <laughs> that really has the mooing and eyeing here at <laughs> Labor Arena. As if it was a, a brilliant backhand from Anna. Look what Lindsay's able to do. So Davenport trying very, very hard to get on the board here. Try to sneak out a win in straight sets. She's broken in Ardennes four times, so she knows she's not out of this set. Game and on. Davenport on the board. In the second set, it's 3-1 in Ardennes. And now then, it's three games to one. And uh, really an exciting time for Lindsay Davenport because in 2004, there were heavy talk about perhaps retiring and she wants to, with her husband John, start a family. And he kind of written her off and she winds up <laughs> playing so well that she's number one in the world and starts 2006 as number one. 15. Such a popular player. So many rooting for her to capture another Grand Slam title. Oh! 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 A little slow getting around to position for that backhand. If you're just joining us, you see the heavy wrap on her left ankle, high ankle sprain. Happened in the Kirilenko match, and then she re-injured playing Kuznetsova. The Russian was very kind and not playing any balls on the court when she was in pain, and oh, Davenport able to advance. And Arden was generous tonight in the first set, being broken four straight games, but it's been a new player here in the second set, and she's a couple of points from a 4-1 lead. After the second set, trying to force a decisive third. Way to 
go. 4-1, second set. And welcome back to Melbourne Park in Rod Laver Arena. Lindsay Davenport, 6-2 in the opening set, and it's Anna Arden up a break at 4-1 in the second. And uh, updating the mixed doubles match, uh, Bjorkman and Raymond won the tie break in the second set, so they'll play for the third round. Well, that should not be just to get into the third round, huh? It shouldn't. Those are two terrific <laughs> doubles teams. That's got to be very entertaining. And, of course, part of uh, any Grand Slam event, you can meander around the outside courts, and very seldom will you be disappointed. You'll find something uh, delicious to enjoy. Pressure on Davenport now. She's down just a break, but needs to hold. 1-4. Well, the good news is she's moved well. She's only been tentative on a few points up at the net where she misconnected on shots she normally would convert easily. a nasty slice from N.R. Den. I couldn't tell you from here. I couldn't tell you from here. So, umpire Molina could not overrule. Let's see what shot spot says. And it was just wide. She's gotten Lindsay a couple of times with those, those slices low to her forehand. Oh! Lindsay's about 6'2". She likes a, a higher bounce. And another double for Davenport, her fifth. point deep in this second set where these next couple of points are all but for the set. Two breakers for N.R. Den. One saved. Another chance for a 5-1 lead. Save another. Now Davenport can't recover back into the court the way she likes, which, so she stayed home. And luckily for her, Justine sent it right, pretty much right back to a racket. Oh. Serving just 50% in the second set, Davenport. Some errors from Justine.
Christine's husband not in attendance for the first time in as long as I can remember watching this woman play. He's home uh, working on his pilot's license. Huh? That's right. His wife is uh, flying along much more smoothly the air in the second set. And now with a double break lead, serves for one set all. It's five games one. Quite a turnabout by N.R. Dan, that first set, unable to hold serve. She hit a lot of ground strokes long, but here in the second set, making Davenport play considerably more balls. Not a break point faced in this set. After laboring every service game with breakers in the opener. This is how Davenport began the match. Trying to end the points early from the net. It's a milestone match of sorts for Lindsay Davenport. Should she win, it would be her 700th career match victory. got to play a lot of years to reach that number. And triple break point for Davenport to maintain some life here in the second set. Really hiking the second serve, points one. After a dismal 12% in the opening set. <laughs> More great defense from Justine and Ardan. And boy, would Davenport like back that smash he had. Should have ended the rally. This is a tremendous lob from Lindsay, and she did well to follow it in. But right here, sent it not nearly far enough away from the backhand of Inna. Hesitant on that high volley. It looked as if it might have been going long. Two more break points, however. Does it? Yeah. And Davenport gets back one break. Still trails 5 2. Davenport seemingly uh, ready to step out of the second set, and NR Den with an easy hold of the Time set, but a break again by Davenport gives her camp some hope. Fans are settling in here as Davenport serves at 2-5 in the second. <laughs> it looks like those who just organized who's who in this match. <laughs> oh, that one's, okay. That one's Lindsay, okay. Davenport's the one in the, is it <laughs> mint green or lime green? Federer says it's lime. She says it's mint green. I like the color. Love the taking.
So much of the Davenport game is built around the strength of her serve game. And when she misses first serves, just her body language changes. Doesn't it? I think more than any top player on tour. Yeah. I mean, she's down to 50% in this second set. It just affects the, the confidence she's got in the rest of her game. 15 She missed the first serve of this game, and I, I swear, Dick, I think I heard her say, this is embarrassing. <laughs> Wouldn't call it that, but it surely makes her struggle more. Miss hit, but it stays in play. A couple of forehand errors from Anna Arden to 30 all. But what is positive is she's showing no signs of pain from that ankle injury, and she's moved rather well, I think. She's trying very hard to force N. Ardan to serve out this second set. She hadn't touched Justine's serve until that last game. Justine, she'll give you some double faults. And they tend to come in clusters. They tend to happen in particular games. Wow. Yes. Coach Carlos Rodriguez. Two points from the set and Arden. Beautiful defensive lob. Third LA from Anna Arden gives her set point. Given her the set. She had the break of the net cord, so had plenty of time. Under 50% serving in the second set. And another set point for N.R. Den. And the double fall gets in our den even. They have traded 6 2 sets. They'll play a third for the semifinals. Lindsay Davenport cruised through that first set 6-2, 34 minutes. It took just two minutes longer for Anna Arden to answer 6-2 in the second. Again, Justine Anna Arden in their series has won the last four meetings after Lindsay started with five straight. 
in their head to head. And Luke Jensen. It's now big, what are you seeing? I think the biggest thing between both sets is attitude. In the second set, Justine really came out and said, I'm determined to find a way. Seems and remember that point where she got yeah. Lindsay deep in the backhand corner and then hit that drop okay. shot? Yeah. And ever yeah. since that point, it's been basically two different players. Justine has found confidence and found a way to win, whereas Lindsay's kind of got that hangdog look right now. She has to pick it up. One set to the semis. Love. Husband John, brother of Rick Leach, longtime outstanding doubles player. Football called for the first time in this match on Justine and Arden. Again, it's windier there than we know, we understand. So the ball could be drifting on both players. Double fault is her sixth. Davenport also with a half dozen. Petrova committed 12 double faults and losing to Sharapova earlier today. Equivalent of three games, two sets. That's a badly miss hit from Davenport's end. Again, the defense of N.R. Dan. Well, Lindsay's the one who had that laser focus in that opening set. All business, and now that's just the kind of look that Justine N. R. Dan is wearing. Wow. That's a nice shot. It was going to be the last shot struck in that rally from Davenport. So she made it count. She doesn't want to have to land hard on that injured left leg and then try to push back into the court from that leg. Badly yeah, missing the forehand, and N.R. Den holds to open the third set. A look at the number one seed, Davenport, and the draw. Women's singles quarterfinals. Maria Sharapova, the fourth seed, advances this afternoon, meets the winner of this one. You see Schneider, Moresmo, Hingis, and Kleisters on the bottom half. And Maria Sharapova already thinking about the semis and her possible opponent. You know, Lindsay's obviously playing great tennis. Um, it's number one in the world as a really big game, and I mean, you have to be have to start off really well and put some pressure on her, get in get into the match. And um, against Tennant, um, I mean, she's a very tricky player. hits hits pretty deep and hard as well. And uh, I mean, both of them are top players. You just you really need to be ready, and it's the semis, and you know, we all want it. I guess tricky means more variety. <laughs> yeah, that's what that means. Well, the only seven weeks of 2005 that Lindsay Davenport was not number one in the world, Maria Sharapova was. Mm. Some acute angles delivered there in the final reply from N.R. Den. Sharapova got to three major semis last year in one quarterfinal. That one at the French where this woman took the title for the second time. Oh. Only 18 years old, but she also, she also wants to prove that she's got more titles in her. Oh. And she 
sure looks like she's going to be facing Justine N. Arden. You saw Davenport take very careful steps in maneuvering for that last backhand. And her first serve percentage continues to dip down to 53% in the match. Thirty. And a break point in Arden. This is huge. And Arden building, building momentum. Game and and then Arden takes a two love lead in the final set. Another Ann. Squeezing in her emotions. Husband John. Who knows who that character is? King of Belgium. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Royalty does often visit <laughs> her matches. She received the highest honor in her country, as the king did, along with Kim Kleisters, uh, or them a national honor a couple of years ago. In fact, uh, it's the great cross of the Order of the Crown. King Albert II awarded that uh, treasured uh, prize at the Royal Palace in Brussels two years ago, saluting their successes. And Davenport talking to herself now. Yeah, stay with it, though, if you're Davenport. Um, and Arden will have some tacky games of her own, even with the lead. Boy, you go from building her up, saying she wins this big royal honor, and then you call her tacky. The next point. No, you call her tacky. Uh, At times, she, uh, <laughs> she wilts. I'm just giving you the business. <laughs> Win or lose, this woman's going to have to stick her foot in a bucket of ice after this match. Well, in the NFL, you talk to a coach who's lost a, a key player because of a high ankle sprain. When they say hi, they're, uh, they furrow the brow because that means not a week. That means yeah. three or four weeks. So this is a tough injury. And uh, the fact she's played as well as she has this evening is, is positive in part for her camp. But she's down a break here in the third set. 30 all. That second serve, she lines it up and drills the backhand winner for a break point. Right into your living room. Very nice. Like the service.
15 so birds fly by. It's an op open roof here at Rod Laver tonight. A flock of seagulls just flew by. <laughs> Distracted her. It's a little sparrow. What are you talking about? So Davenport rallies to break and what a point that was on the game point that she exercised that drop shot. Meanwhile in that mixed doubles out at Margaret Court Arena in that super tiebreaker Bupati and Hingis advanced to the third round against the number two seeds Bjorkman and Raymond. Thank you. Hingis continues to <laughs> deliver some Positive news, doesn't she? Pretty snappy uh, return to the game. And of course, she plays Kim Kleister as the second seed tomorrow. Try to get into the semis. serve in the next game and our Dan going to dig in right here and Dick that's why it's vitally important for Davenport to get a lot of first serves in in this final set these extended rallies will not go her way she's so aggravated look that she's missing on these serves 43 percent punch the ball all the way into the first row behind in our Den who punches a winner down the line with that sweet backhand to love 30. I'm getting clobbered on second serves. Too many of them too. A couple of years ago, the opponent stayed away from that backhand of NR Den. Now she's improved the forehand to the point where there really isn't a soft side. Well, Lindsay's definitely playing into her backhand more, Dick. And frankly, her backhand has always been the, the flashier shot, but her forehand has been her better stroke for years. Hey! 30 all. David DeLucia, the new coach, he made the change a couple of months ago. Cleaner numbers for Anna Arden. How did she get that back? Such a little roadster. <laughs> I mean, she could take the curves and get back into the court, force Davenport to play one more shot. And a point now for the number one seed for two all in this final set. She's just missing wide in that ad court. That was close, but so many have, but have missed. And now the double fault. Yes. Seven apiece. <laughs> I just have 
to assume that part of her serving problems are because of that taped ankle. She can't push off it fully, can she? She exactly barely got right. that one into the off the net into the service court. Yep. That's her lead leg when she serves Davenport. It's got to be stable. She's got to be able to use it to draw back, load up, and then kick into the court. And she holds to all final set. Getting interesting, Luke. Yeah, absolutely. And you're talking about that front leg, that left ankle being a problem on that serve. Uh, even on the first and the second, she pivots off of that. You can see her. She steps into it, bends her knees, and then she turns her, her hips and her body sideways. And you can see it actually pivoting. And when that thing's not stable, right. she loses her balance and can't get up into that serve. More of falling into the serve. And we've seen that a few times when she's struck the ball low into the net. Now she needs a big return game. Let this Let this. Look to hit body blows, quick ones. Love Love okay. She is such an outstanding ball striker, even though it doesn't seem that she takes a big swipe at the ball it just jumps off her racket and there was a case in point it's timing too you know Some scrambling there until she regained the middle of the court, and that's when she made her move with this tremendous backhand. The center has got to hold for Davenport in this final set. Paints the line. Love 30. Superb on NR Den. She was being yo-yoed, dictating the point Davenport, but NR Den's defense pays a 1530 reward. Close to a triple breaker for Davenport if she had converted that point. Two all, thirty all, final set. Hour and 33 minutes into the match. And our Den out of Love 30. Point for 3 2.
Davenport did well to get that serve back. And our Den, Mary, more deliberate now mm -hmm. after every point. Double faults for NR Den. Never a good time for one. And here in the final set, takes her away from game point, gives Davenport another chance. Break point Davenport. That's a very telling statistic. Davenport just hoping that she continues to miss on her first serves because she's eating up that second serve. Oh my. Why down that one? She did have some power, a hundred and twelve. And a second serve betrays her again. Davenport in control of the point quickly and has her second break point. And this the longest game of the match and how dramatically it arrives at two all in the final set. the middle for in our den she's stubborn isn't she you know she's not connecting on a lot of these she's had her, her share of double faults and she just insists on trying to do things her way anyway mm. and it's part of the growth that we've seen at, t at one time somewhat fragile but not anymore she's uh, steely tough she'll go if she goes down it'll be on her terms net cord helps her there saves two break points they're on serve in the final set here in the Garden City along the Yarra River, downtown Melbourne. She's the favorite one, and uh, I'm just the underdog. 
Like, you know, Martina obviously she's a great champion, but when you're out there, you just you just focus about what you have to do. I wanted to prove to myself that I could still challenge the girls. Right now, I really don't have anything to lose. And their quarterfinal match tomorrow will be seen live at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Kleister is the U.S. Open champion. Martina Hingis winning this title three consecutive years in the late 90s and a finalist six times. And how well she has returned from a three-year absence. Love that's a team. big hold by N.R. Den in that last game. Stay on serve. And a we were just talking, Dick, about how, how stubborn N.R. Den is. I think Sharapova is the same way when she plays her matches. And the last time they played was at the last year's Roland Garros. And it was easy for N.R. Den. There's an easy forehand stroke for a winner by Davenport, 15 all. Four and 15 two, all Justine won, and she just had Sharapova slipping and sliding all over the red clay of Roland Garros. And uh, afterwards, Sharapova was left shaking her head, saying, I've got to learn how to move on this stuff. But uh, it'll be different if those two play here. Sharapova will have much better traction. In our den, it conceded that forehand, but struck long by Davenport. Oh. Again, she misses wide on that serve in the bad court. If she loses this match, it will be what Davenport talks about. How her serve just wasn't there for her tonight. French version of come on, LA, go. And big time winner for NR Dan and two break points go with it. Well, shot it right down the LA here for a very clean <laughs> winner. And now you've got to think that Davenport's movement is very much uh, compromised. And it's even affecting, I think, her serve. And she's just fed up, serving at 44% for this set. Oh, gets a break there on a second serve. One breaker saved. And Arden able to dig out of a couple of break points against in her game. Big point. Let's see how much she can push off this injured leg. Oh, it turned nicely into that one. Another break chance. Spot shot. I thought it was on the line. Not overruled. So break point in our den. That's a tough call against Davenport. Yes. But NR Den unable to take advantage. Back to Deuce. Oh. Forcing Davenport to come forward and couldn't clear the net. 
four break points in this game for N.R. Den. Some good defense, but on the fourth break point, N.R. Den converts and leads 4-2 in the final set. You know, the 23-year-old Belgian Two games from meeting Mary, Maria Sharapova in the semis. Now Davenport's going to have to pull out a rally. Oh my, a whistling forehand winner. Again, this looks Federer-like. The ultimate compliment. I guess you can it give is. To a tennis player. <laughs> it's like Raj. And have to send him to a higher league. Oh. Contribution of the ninth double fault. Well, she'll have to, if she does in fact play Maria Sharapova in the semis, she'll have to go for big second serves as well. Sharapova's return game is daunting. Shastine's first serve percentage barely above 50% for the match. And again, they come in, this is how it works with Shastine. They, they come in bunches. Double figures now, 10. And if there's a game where she's got two, sometimes I've seen her with three double faults in one game, and you fail to convert, fail to break her there, you really walk away shaking your head. She's got a short ball and punished it. Third year. But that's the difference. The first serve in, and she gets a better ball to play. It's a smart serve into the Davenport body as well. Make her move out of her own way. Oh. Late call, but no argument from Davenport's end. Had a couple that haven't gone her way tonight. Yeah, Fuzz might have gotten the back edge of the line. 40 30 in our den. Oh. Uh, reaction to the ball, kids uh, trying to scamper after the, the pill. She's been shaking out her arm a little bit in this game, Dick. After her serve three points ago. She's still shaking it out a little bit. Racehorse this one. You know, makes all those moves that <laughs> <laughs> like the fine racehorses make, referring to different body parts and feeling yeah, everything. There. And there's another. <laughs> yeah, Luke. Hey, Mary, what's really confusing to me is where's the Davenport from the first set that was ripping volleys out of the air, taking opportunities and attacking the Belgian? I think she's hurt. 
I think she's hurt and, and disappointed and aggravated at this point. She played such a clean opening set. Game and now, and and now another race. And Arden, a game away from the semis. Final set, 5-2 in our den. Davenport will be on the line. Had her chances on in our den serves. A couple of tough calls on the baseline went against Davenport, but... She didn't even fight him, though, did she? No, she did not. Playing on that injured ankle, only she will be able to inform us as to how much that's impacted her game. But she's played well enough, but has run into a feisty, tough... Comp Competitor across the way and a oh, miss on the backhand. At <laughs> Love 30, she went all out. Davenport would certainly want to hold here and put the pressure on NR Den to serve it out. Beautifully struck. She's not had an ace, Lindsay Davenport, in the entire match. She's had considerable number of service winners and a big one there. It's hard to hit a clean winner off of Anna Arden. Yeah, well, there it is, her first <laughs> ace. <laughs> she throws out her left hand limply as if to say, where's that been? Yeah. So and now in Arden at 5-3 serves for the match. And she, in the past, has had some nervous game serving for the next round. Let's see how she holds up here. contact with her coach as she went back by the Lions people. Hmm. A couple of return errors from Davenport. Sends Ennard in two points from the match. Oh, hits the 
sideline for match point. A couple of them. after a shaky opening set from Justine and Arden pulled her game together while Lindsay Davenport playing on that injured ankle uh, her level of play dipping in the second and had chances in the third but she the number one seed is dismissed it'll be Justine and Arden and Maria Sharapova in one semi-final bracket and uh, with that loss Lindsay Davenport uh, also loses her number one ranking to Kim Kleisters. It took a set for Justina and Arden to get used to the pace of shot of Lindsay Davenport. Davenport able to survive two rounds on that bad ankle, but couldn't get by, by someone tonight of Anna Arden's class. Two to one head to head. Anna Arden against Sharapova. Could so be a very tough semi, but I like this one in that one. Former champion gets another chance. She's in the final four, defeating the number one seed, Lindsay Davenport, tonight. <laughs> 